just uh, sort of lately, well, um, this morning, this, uh, getting here, I guess next Sunday we're going to change to a different daylight savings time here. So keep that in mind, uh, November 1st, daylight savings time. Um, so I come before you this morning to think about, um, well, you know, there's a lot of chaos going on right now, and this fall, I mean, this October, I mean, October is always kind of a tumultuous month, and it's a transition time for a lot of people, but, you know, I just, some things happened this month which kind of just have really uh, concerned me in many ways. You know, for example, I'm doing my, uh, I'm doing my chaplain's residency at the VA in Muskogee, VA hospital there in Muskogee, and just before it was supposed to start, uh, the supervisor down there found out by having to call the residents who had committed to be in there, the ministers who had committed to be in there for his residency, to make sure they were coming, and found out that two of them weren't even, had changed their mind, weren't going to show up and had never bothered to notify him. And that, you know, that, that leads right into what I'm talking about here today. Uh, I'm telling you, we're, we're going to cover a God today, and that is uh, character. And uh, we're going to talk about character today. I, we're going to jump away from some of the other stuff we've been doing, we're, we're going to talk about character today, and what it means to have good character. So let's, uh, let's get started here by uh, opening our Hebrew Bibles to, what are we going to read here, Deca no Gida 67, uh, Psalm 67, sorry, Psalm 67. Uh, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face, make God's face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere God. That's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty powerful. That's, that's good. Uh, so, our next reading is going to be from Madhu, which is Matthew. And that is uh, 15, 10 through 20. And so if you want to go to your uh, New Testament there, we're going to do that. And I'm going to do the Cherokee first. I do. We do ya hano uni jati haya ni dawe selangi i ja dagan ga ale i jolige putla Skina, no, excuse me, Udla Skini, Nazgina, Ahole, Woya, Plehi, Gadahi, Gadaha, Yunawa, Neho, Yahweh, Ahole Skini, Nadaya, Nago, Jahi, Nazgi, Gadaha, Nawat Neho, Yahweh, Nako, no, Gawasta, Wadi, Dohi, Uni Lodja, Hia, Nigawa, Selangi, Higata, Hasdigo, Anikapwa, Lis, Si, Uni, Narata, Jahi, Unada, Gana, Nazgi, Hia, Nija, Wesangi, Aseno, Une Jagi, Hia, Na, Wesangi, Nigaha, do yega idoda jawe sanghi ni ge sana di e is di ge se is di muna ne lagi di ni ge we quo di ne ge we 
dinatini dohi iono degiwe yatine degiwe i jula ta lesan janila isdi kuila do unaja hia na we selangi disgio si sai hia nasgi datla dat excuse me datli los da i Jisa no hiya no we san li no gi ha si sko na sko ni hi ni jo li ga na ko i gi Plus go a si i lo i jo li ga na gi ni ga a go ha zda u ho li u ya sta na hi ge san o sko li gi Iga la gi yi nas gi no we ga lo his dis ga ho nas gi ni u ho li na da ya na go ja hi o na we yi de da le has go yi nas gi no ga da ha u nu wa ne ho ya we o na we yi yo ni di da le ha sko u so na a da na te di ge sa i a le a da i s di i ge sa i a le a do yo ne di i ge sa i a le u de li da di ni si di i ge sa i a le ga no s gi s di i ge sa i a le a ji go di i da na da ye le di do ho hi a le a so kla is do di ye ge sa hi and the final verse na s gi s gi ni hi a ga da ha hi ya wa ne hi ya we ni da sa le ha na s gi ni a li s da ya di ya hi ya hud la ga da ha ye na wa ne ho Yahweh. Oh. Powerful stuff. Ten through twenty. In English. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what? You said, he answered, Every plant that my heavenly uh, Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still with that understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile the person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place. Oh, we're going to stop there. Yep. His final statement on this particular verse is, These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. So, character. Character is a reflection of the heart. For what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. What comes out of action comes from the heart, comes from intention. It is through intention that you're able to understand and to know whether people have good character. And so, uh, now I'm not talking about people making mistakes. Things happen. And I'm talking about people who plot and scheme and passive aggressively manipulate, exploit others for their own personal gain. We're talking about people who are egocentric, self-serving, versus 
tested by fire. Yeah, that's what we're talking about here. So, you know, the uh, the Greek word for character is doke, he may. And in the original Greek, ancient Greek, the biblical Greek, this, this word represented um, a person who has been tried, who has proved, who has been approved by the community as having good care. So basically, uh, we're talking about someone who has, through right action, demonstrated that they are a person of good care. I must tell a story here. It's called The Emperor's Seed. It, it was written by, who, who, this, who wrote this? Well, it just, it, it was in a book, I think, More Hot Illustrations for You, for Youth, Talks, from Zondervan in 1995. That's where the source is, but let me, uh, let me tell you this story. The Emperor's Seed. And I think it will be very appropriate to what we're talking about here today. Once, there was an emperor in the Far East who was growing old and knew it was coming time to choose his successor. Instead of choosing one of his assistants or one of his own children, he decided to do something different. He called all the young people in the kingdom together one day. He said, it has come time for me to step down and to choose the next emperor. I have decided to choose one of you. The kids were shocked. But the emperor continued, I am going to give each of you one, oh, I'm going to give each one of you a seed today. One seed. It is a very special seed. I want you to go home, plant the seed, water it, and come back here one year from today with what you have grown from this one seed. I will then judge the plants that you bring to me, and the one I choose will be the next emperor of the kingdom. There was one boy named Ling who was there that day, and he, like the others, received a seed. He went home and excitedly told his mother the whole story. She helped him get a pot and some planting soil. And he planted the seed and watered it carefully. Every day he would water it and watch to see if it had grown. After about three weeks, some of the other youths began to talk about their seeds and the plants that were beginning to grow. Ling kept going home and checking his seed, but nothing ever grew. Three weeks, four weeks, five weeks went by, still nothing. By now, others were talking about their plans, but Ling didn't have a plan, and he felt like a failure. Six months went by, still nothing in Ling's pot. He just knew he had killed his seed. Everyone else had trees and tall plants. But he had nothing. Ling didn't say anything to his friends, however. He just kept waiting for his seed to grow. A year finally went by, and all the youths of the kingdom brought their plants to the emperor for inspection. Ling told his mother that he wasn't going to take an empty pot. But she encouraged him to go and to take his pot and to be honest about what happened. Ling felt sick to his stomach, but he knew his mother was right. He took his empty pot to the palace. When Ling arrived, he was amazed at the variety of plants grown by all the other youths. They were beautiful in all shapes and sizes. Ling put his empty pot on the floor and many of the other kids laughed at him. A few felt sorry for him and just said, hey, nice try. When the emperor arrived, he surveyed the room and greeted the young people. Ling just tried to hide in the back. My, what great plants, trees, and flowers you have grown, said the emperor. Today, one of you will be appointed the next emperor. All of a sudden, the emperor spotted Ling at the back of the room with his empty pot. He ordered his guards to bring him to the front. Ling was terrified. 
The emperor knows I am a failure. Maybe he will have me killed. When Ling got to the front, the emperor asked his name. My name is Ling, he said, he replied. All the kids were laughing and making fun of him. The emperor asked everyone to quiet down. He looked at Ling and then announced to the crowd, Behold your new emperor. His name is Ling. Ling couldn't believe it. Ling couldn't even grow his seed. How could he be the new emperor? Then the emperor said, One year ago today, I gave everyone here a seed. I told you to take the seed, plant it, water it, and bring it back to me today. But I gave you all boiled seeds, which would not grow. All of you, except Ling, have brought me trees and plants and flowers. When you gave, found that the seed would not, had, would not grow, you substituted another seed for the one I gave you. Ling was the only one with the courage and the honesty to bring me a pot with my seed in it. Therefore. He is the one who will be the new emperor. This is a story about character. And in this story, the boy is valued in this story is courage and honesty above all things. And that makes sense because in our Indian religious tradition, We value character as well, and everybody's different. And uh, but there are certain tests of fire that people go through in our traditional community to demonstrate what kind of character they have. And one of the things the elders look for is whether or not a person is willing, has a willingness to honor and respect others in a good way. And so, when we think about test by fire, you know, rites of passage, if you want to think about them in that way, there are many rites of passage within our traditions which demonstrate a person's courage and also didn't demonstrate a person's willingness to be honest. Honest with themselves and honest with others. And what we have been challenged with over and over again is whether how important courage and honesty really is. And Jesaw here says, in this reading today, it's not what goes in the mouth that defiles a person, it's what comes out. What kind of character does it take to be a good person? takes a person who puts the welfare and the well-being of others equal to their own. It takes a person who believes in treating others with dignity and respect. Good character is not only inclusive of courage because, well, you know what? I may be wrong about that. Courage may be a prerequisite. It takes a great deal of courage to put the needs of others equal to your own. And you can tell those, because one of the things he talked about here is, you know, deceitfulness and uh, theft, false witness, you know. Uh, there's, there's a lot to this. I hear a lot of gossiping going on in different places, different people, you know. Uh, trying to tear other people down in order to make themselves look better. Uh, manipulation, passive aggressive exploitation, uh, you know, this, th these are things that determine whether or not an individual has good character or not. And let's talk about that in the context of what Jesus is saying here, because we know that Jesus has said already that only God is good. Okay, that's in Magad 10, 18. And it's also in Luke. I'm not sure what the verse is, but it's there. And Jesus himself says that only God is good. So how can you have a good character if you're not a good person? 
how can you do that? Well, good character in this context is something that we have to strive for. We have to want it. We have to be the kind of person who wants to emulate Jesus and the example that he set for others to follow. We want to, we have to want to be the kind of person who takes right action in the way that God has guided us to do. Good character comes from the heart. It's within the heart that people decide whether or not they want to do the next right thing each and every time. And sometimes we make mistakes. People, everybody makes mistakes. But it is the example of good character to own your mistakes, take responsibility for your actions, and do the next right thing. That's important. That's what makes a person of good character what the Greeks call a person who has been through trial has, has, has proved themselves has tried to live a good life and I know it's very subjective what a good life is it's very culturally subjective because what is good character to us in our Indian religious tradition may not be what is considered good character in mainline Christianity for example here in Oklahoma and in other places that I have lived, I've encountered many churches who can be termed as being closed. They're only open to people who are either family members or friends, very tight-knit communities, and they do not welcome outsiders into their church. I have seen this time and again. And of course these churches are dying off, they're not thriving. So as a group, as a community, what is their character? This character goes beyond the individual to the community. Who is leading that community? What kind of example are they setting for others to follow? This ministry strives to set the kind of example for others to follow, to be of good character, to do the next right thing. And sometimes that's a challenge. It is. Uh, internally, not everybody has the same concept of what good character is or what the ministry should be. And so we, we have to be careful to watch out to make sure that within our community, each and every one of us, that we strive, that we try to be a community of good character. This is essential for a thriving community to grow and evolve as Jesus originally intended it to do. And we saw this same kind of struggle back here in the first century Palestine, in the early churches, that they they struggled with this too, so it's not a new concept, not a new challenge. So we are struggling with it today, many of us, especially within the disciples' denomination. And so we ask that each and every one of you, within your community, wherever you're at, wherever you're at to strive to be a person of good character, to study it, to examine it, to evaluate it, and to get honest with yourself, where you're at, what your motives are, and what do you need to change to follow according to the teachings that you saw wants you to follow. Very important, very important. And so, again, we think about those things that defile us. You know, uh, I've heard people talk about bad language, things like that. Um, I'm not going to go down that road. You know, I've been known to say bad words from time to time. And uh, usually when I'm angry, and so, uh, you know, we all have our challenges to continue to grow in, but our intentions, our motives, is what determines what kind of character we truly have. Do we have the courage that it takes to be a person of good character? Do we have the courage to be honest 
about ourselves, with ourselves, and with others. Jesus wants us to prove that we are persons of good character, to be the kind of person others are glad to know, glad to be around. Are you one of those people? Walking beautiful.